to be in the house of the Lord on the second day of the new year. Happy New Year to all of you. And uh, I'd like to get into the word today, back to the series on Acts. Acts chapter 20 is where you should turn to. Acts chapter 20. I'm sure some of you are old enough to remember that commercial that says, I'm, I've fallen and I can't get up. You remember that commercial? They used to play all the time. Uh, they were selling this device called the medical alert or medical guardian that would be worn around the neck of older people. And if they had fallen, if they were living alone or in a nursing home, if they had fallen, they would press that button and that would directly reach the emergency services and they, and they would be able to send help if somebody had fallen. But I know you young people are more technologically advanced. Some of you have the uh, Apple Watch 7 series that just came out a couple of months ago. And I heard one of the features, it has a gyrometer that can pick up when you fall. So when you fall, this alert will come up uh, and uh, it says, do you want to send an emergency alert or call 911? And I heard that some people's lives have been saved by this device. I've fallen and I can't get up. But today, from Acts chapter 20, verse 7 through 12, I'd like to talk to you about a message that I've entitled, I've fallen, but I'm fortunate I can get up. I'm fortunate I can get up. It's the story of a young man named Eutychus. And thank God for the grace of God that as we were singing this morning, gospel-centered song about the grace and the love of the Lord. As we also heard a couple of nights ago about the enduring mercies of the Lord. Amen. We are currently in the tail end of Paul's third missionary journey. And uh, he has gone up uh, all throughout Greece and Asia Minor. And he's now having a pit stop coming from Philippi on his way to Jerusalem, collecting money from all of the churches he had started to help the church in Jerusalem. And he is now in a city called Troas. And he is in the last day of a seven-day preaching ministry. Apostle Paul is in the midst of the church in Troas, this young church. And many have gathered. And this is the last of the seven nights. The night before, Paul would leave them. And they would not see Paul's face anymore. And they gathered in a third floor room, a third story room. And... Uh, there was many people gathered there from the young church, but there was also one young man, and his name was Eutychus. His name is only mentioned once in the Bible, and Dr. Luke makes us sure that we know this name Eutychus. It is derived from the word uh, Eutyka in Greek, and it's a Latinized version called Eutychus. How many of you know what that means? You means well or good. 2K means fortune or providence or fate or success. So his name meant good fortune or good success. But what happened to him may seem very unfortunate. But there was something very fortunate that Apostle Paul was in their midst and he was able to be revived and brought back to life. Amen. Amen. That's the background as I would ask you to turn to Acts chapter twenty. Verse 7 through 12, if you would read that with me. Acts chapter 20. Are you there? Verse 7 through 12. I'll read it from the screen here. On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day, and he prolonged his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered. And as a young man named Eutychus, sitting at the windows, sat into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer and became overcome by sleep. And he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down and bent over him and taking him in his arms and said, do not be alarmed for his life is in him. When Paul had gone up 
afterwards, when Paul had gone up and he had broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them even more a long while until daybreak, and then he departed. Verse 12, and they took the youth away alive and were not a little comforted. Now, when it says not a little comforted, that means they were greatly comforted. Amen. So as I said, this happens in the city of Troas. And we're familiar with many miracles of dead people being raised to life in the Bible. Um, we see uh, in 1 Kings chapter 17, Elijah raises the widow of Zarephath's son. And he lays upon him, stretches himself out over him three times. And that is how this widow of Zarephath's son is revived back to life. We see Elisha, the Shunammite woman's son, first he sends his servant, and the servant is not able to do the miracle, and then he goes himself, and he goes and lays upon this child, stretches out or hugs him, and we see that this son is also revived. We know of at least three instances where Jesus himself raised people from the dead. Um, Jesus raised the widow Widow, son of nine in Luke chapter seven, and in Luke chapter eight, it was Jairus' daughter that he raised. And then we are familiar with Lazarus in John chapter 11. It's also in another, uh, different other portions, uh, some of these miracles. And we know that Peter, in Acts chapter nine, as we studied earlier, raised Tabitha from the dead as well. And now it's Paul's turn. Paul in Acts chapter 20, the portion that we just read, we see he raises Eutychus. From the dead. And as Pastor was teaching, in order to authenticate Paul as a true apostle, and an apostle has the marks of signs, wonders, and miracle, the Lord might have been using this instance, as Dr. Luke records, to show that Paul was a true apostle of Christ. But is that the only point here? Let us look into that story a little bit more in detail. We're meeting a young man, and his name is Eutychus. He is raised from the dead, and there were many causes that I can see in there that were the causes of his fall and his untimely death. And I kind of put this down as too many hits. He took too many hits. One, we know that this was on the first day of the week. It was Sunday, and uh, this was a Sunday evening meeting, probably started around 6 or 7 p.m., uh, around dinner time, and they were supposed to break bread and eat dinner. But Paul had come, and they were so zealous to hear Paul, and the meeting had gone on and on, and he did not have a chance to eat any food here. And we see that he was hungry. If you study other portions as well, you can see that it is when we are hungry uh, that we get into all kinds of temptation. Our natural urges and inclinations uh, are fed, and we see that Jesus himself in Matthew 4 was tempted after a 40-day fast. So he was expecting food about five hours earlier, and he was hungry or hangry, if you want to call it. Next, we see that he was isolated. We see even though there was a huge crowd of people, the church of Troas and all the new believers had come to the third floor room to have this fellowship with Paul and hear from the word of God. We see that the place that this young man chooses to sit is kind of curious. He decides to sit on the windowsill. Instead of sitting in the main part of the room, he chooses to sit in the windowsill, maybe half in and half out, drifting as Justin talked about last week. And no one had around him caught this, and that is what is amazing. There was a whole church of people that were busy listening to Paul, and we get used to that as well. We come to church on Sundays, but there are many young people among us that are drifting, that are sitting half in, half out, and I don't know if we reach out to them. You know, one of the best ways to fall and be spiritually dead is to be in isolation, have no accountability, no one to be honest with. Christian, 
uh, life, Christian walk, is not supposed to be done alone. And if you are isolated, you will tend to drift. And instead of growing daily, you will tend to drift. And that's why the Lord has provided fellowship, church, small groups, opportunities to plug in and not just drift and be on the windowsill half in and half out of the meeting. So even though Eutychus was at the meeting and he was listening to truths, it said there were many lamps there, and lamps is a representation of the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Even though the word of God was plenty and was being spoken, I don't know how much of it was going inside of his heart. He was looking outside the window uh, to see what was going out in the darkness. And in the inside, there was plenty of light, but I don't know how much he was able to comprehend. Next, he was tired. You know, when you look at this name, Eutychus, Bible, some Bible scholars say that he was possibly a servant or a slave boy, and that uh, the name meant lucky, lucky, um, and uh, fortunate because he, his name meant that he was someone that was a servant. And he could have been working all day. In the Roman culture on Sunday mornings, they did work, and uh, he could have been working all day, and he could have come into this meeting. So shouldn't we be thankful that at least he came to listen to Paul? But his toils, his daily work had him very tired. So we've spoken about HIT. And the last thing it says that he fell into a deep slumber and he felt uh, sleepy. If you look at sleep science, there are four stages of sleep. And three are... Uh, the first three stages without the eye movement, and the last is the rapid eye movement stage where you go have dreams. Um, and it's important to have good sleep without which you lose your immunity uh, and you cannot form new memories, you cannot study well. Um, so uh, I think that, did you guys know that uh, the American Society of Sleep Medicine says that six to 12 year olds are supposed to have nine to 12 hours of sleep? And 13 to 18-year-olds are supposed to have 8 to 10 hours of sleep. I know I'm preaching from the gospel here, but I also wanted to tell you guys that that is the recommended sleep for teenagers, not to look at screens all day and then not get sleep. And it says that 7 out of 10 students in America are at increased risk of health and behavioral problems because they don't get enough sleep. When we are spiritually sleepy and are slumbering, it is easy to fall down. And is that what happened to Eutychus that caused his fall and fall down to his death? Maybe there are many people here that are hungry for things that are not spiritual, that are isolating themselves, that are not willing to come into communion with others, that are tired because of the last couple of years of everything that has been happening and the pandemic around us, that are sleepy spiritually, it might only take one of these four, or some of you might be suffering with all four out of four, and we see that it can lead to a fall to a, this young man who was willing to come in and listen to Paul and can lead to his eventual death. Now, if you were to give the benefit of the doubt to Eutychus and say, you know, Eutychus had worked hard all day. He had uh, risen early and gone to the fields. He was a servant boy, and he had done hard labor. Why are we being so hard on Eutychus? You know, he'd done a hard day's labor, and uh, he was expecting dinner at 6 or 7, and now it's later, five hours later, um, and he wanted to come and listen to Paul preach, so why don't we give him some credit? You know, maybe it was inadvertent that he fell off the window perch, and, uh, you know, there was nothing to it, but... Even in the midst of, as Justin said last week, if we are not actively seeking co being constructed, then we are inadvertently drifting away from the Lord. You could be in the right place. You could be here in this church listening to me. But if you're not taking this word to heart and writing it on the tablets of your heart, you could be just like Eutychus, who is here in the right place at the right time. Even though truth is being spoken you don't take heed and walk in the truth or abide in the word. So even if we were to give Eutychus a benefit of the doubt, 
this serves as a dire warning that we need to be, uh, as Pastor said, move a little bit forward and take the next steps to, to, to be abiding with the Lord these days. Amen. So we see the next uh, uh, scene there where Paul is uh, uh, stopping his message. It could have been that he took many hits and that's why Eutychus had fallen. Paul could have easily blamed Eutychus. It was Eutychus's fault that he sat on the window. It was nobody else's fault. There was many other seats in the, in the church. Um, and we could say that he had fallen asleep and it was all his fault. But Apostle Paul, in the middle of his preaching, he didn't continue on preaching, but he stopped and he went directly and helped him. How do we help our fallen brothers and sisters? We see Paul went down, fell upon him, embraced him, trouble not yourself for his life is in him. As young people, as Christians, as older folks, we might tend to drift and uh, we might be on the point of falling or almost dead. But what do we do to them? Do we talk about them? Do we love them or embrace them and pray for them? What do we do? We can see uh, that we have a choice today. We could be a Eutychus in the room or you could be one of the bystanders at, or be Apostle Paul. You could be an encourager, someone who is not a critic but saying he is alive. Here Paul, as a representative of God, is saying Eutychus is not dead. Uh, he is dead, but he has life in him, and he is able to be revived, is what Apostle Paul said. Paul was, as a representative of God, able to see that even though there was no semblance of life in this young man, Eutychus, that there was a potential future, and he held on to him, hugged him until he was revived back to life. And afterwards, Apostle Paul, after making him alive, broke bread, and it says he went upstairs and broke bread and ate. Presumably, this young man also went up there and broke bread. And we see a beautiful picture of communion that waited until he was revived. Not uh, having communion without Eutychus, but with Eutychus, after he was restored, there was communion. And then they continued to talk until daylight. I'm sure Eutychus did not fall back asleep the rest of the night because he had been made alive. He had been made anew. He had been restored. And the people took the young man home alive and they were greatly comforted. And because of this restoration, we see that he became a blessing to everyone around us. You know, you might think this is a silly story of just five scripture portions that Dr. Luke put into this portion. It's the only portion in the Bible that talks about Eutychus. But if you look at this story, it is the story of you and me. We used to be dead like Eutychus. We used to be living after the pleasures of sin. And God sent his only begotten son, as we've been singing this morning, into the earth. He became lowly so that we can be restored back to life. I have a few scripture portions that reiterates that point. Romans chapter 6, verse 7, chapter 6, verse 7, 11, and 23. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know now we also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. And now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God so that you also consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of, of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our God. Jesus died on our place and he broke the power of death Death no longer has any power over Jesus. And if we live with Jesus, if we live for his glory, we also have that power over sin and death. If we're living for the pleasures of this world, it will surely lead to death like Eutychus fell down. He had taken too many hits. He had taken too many uh, opportunities to drift away. 
He had stayed hungry for the things of the world. He had uh, a thirst for the things of this world. He was sleepy and not uh, uh, following after the ways of the Lord. But in, what, even after he had fallen and died, the Lord came and restored him. In Titus 2, verse 11 through 14, it says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people, and we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God, while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed. He gave his life for, to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing his good deeds. Amen. Amen. God has not saved us to go back to a life of sin. The grace of the Lord has been shown upon us so that we can live a life of wisdom, of righteousness, and devotion to God. I'm sure Eutychus, after this experience, never went back to being the same again. He might have been a slave boy before. He might have felt like he was under the bondage of slavery, but he received freedom that day. He gave him life and freedom from every kind of sin, and we see that is what the Lord Jesus does for us, and we are to be totally committed to doing good deeds for the Lord. The next portion is from Ephesians, and you're very familiar with this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. So we had this nature that was against God. We had this uh, nature that was against the, the will of God. But God, it says, but God, so rich in mercy, he loved us so much that even though we are dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point us all, uh, us in all future ages for, as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for this. It is a gift of God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. But we are God's masterpieces. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he has planned for us a long time ago. As the worship team is coming up, let me ask you this question. You know, I was, uh, I'll say a word in Malayalam. Uh, I was listening to somebody say this week, um, that who is the man that is fortunate or Bhagyava Narana Kerala Karunya Lottery Adichala La Bhagyavan Deva Karuna Labicha Manishanana Bhagyavan Amen That means that the grace, the mercy and the and the and the fortunate one, if you were to ask, is if you put that sermon title back up, I've fallen and I'm fortunate I can get up. The story of Eutychus is a story of Minu. It is a story of each person sitting here. Thank God for his grace. Let us not abuse his grace, however. After coming to such a great saving knowledge of the Lord, let us lead a life that is righteous. We can't be perfect, but coming back to the Father and saying, Lord, I've messed up in this and that, and coming, running back to the Father. Just like the prodigal son, the reaction of the father when he came back and said, Lord, uh, father, I have messed up. The father embraced him. And that was able to restore him back into the community. 
We could be two people sitting here. We could be Eutychuses. We could be drifting, as we heard last week. And it's time for us to come back this new year and construct, go a little forward, construct into the ways of the Lord. Or we could be like the crowd. You might be at a spiritual height, but there are many Eutychuses around you that need a helping hand. They're hungry to know more about God. They're falling asleep. They're slumbering. Those could be your very children in your home. And those could be other children in the church. There could be other people around you that need the saving grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. This is my story. This is your story that we could sing all the day long that our Lord Jesus saved us. I am fortunate that I can get up like Eutychus. May God bless you all with these words.